here to stay
Seven points from nine have been picked up at a very happy valley so far this season, but only one have been earned on the road. We hope that changes this afternoon. Wickham Wanderers are the team that we play this afternoon, last season's playoff finalists, and a win will more than likely keep us inside the top six places. The Chairboys boasted the fifth best home record in League One last season, so we know it will not be easy. Here's just some of what we got coming up before kickoff. We'll hear exclusively from manager Ben Garner, who spoke to Charlton TV commentator Terry Smith yesterday morning. We'll speak live to women's team captain Emily Simpkins, ahead of the Addicts' first home game of the season against London City Lionesses tomorrow afternoon. And we'll also hear from last season's player of the year, George Dobson, who brought up 50 appearances for the club on Tuesday night and has made an impressive start to the season. A very warm welcome and delighted to say we've got the A-team alongside me here, Sir Alan Kerbishley, <laughs> alongside Sir, Brownie. Sir Alan. He is, sir, of course he is. Now, we have just spent the last 10, 15 minutes just before coming on air complaining about the aircon. One's too hot, the other one's too cold. Are we OK here now, chaps? Just or about what? right, yeah. You're just sure? about yeah. right now. Okay. Well, it's East Paul, it's a big fix shirt on. Well, one of us is acclimatising from the little trip. <laughs> That's what one of us is doing. Well, the last time we were all together... <laughs> You hadn't gone to Ireland and you hadn't gone to Malaysia. Yeah. So, so how did it go? How did it go? I had a great time, yeah. Yeah, I was mad his 50th, so uh, a good time was had <laughs> by all. <laughs> Mine my, my was a little bit hectic. It was a little bit hectic. Yeah, it was Malaysia. Uh, that, that was work, wasn't it? Yeah, but uh, on behalf of the Premier League. And um, had some good games, to be honest. You know, Liverpool, Man United, which was the one everyone wants. Well, Man United, Liverpool. But Newcastle, Man City, and uh, Leeds, Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea. You know, and Leeds good, well. good, uh, good games, and um, yeah, saw a little bit of uh, Kuala Lumpur. So it was okay. Yeah. I saw some photos on social media. Yeah, a yeah. friend of yours was sending them back, wasn't he? Is well, it Adam? Adam, yeah, yeah, yeah. the presenter. Yeah, yeah. 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 you were Jody Morris, weren't you? Yeah, and I done a, we, I done a podcast with Adam, and one or two people got a mention. Did I get mentioned? One or two people. Brownie? Me, one or two people. Oh, I'll have to listen to that now. <laughs> slightly concerned what you said. Yeah. Look, since we've also been together as well, we've picked up four points here at the Valley, progressed through to the next round of the Carabao mm. Cup. Things looking reasonably rosy for you, Brownie? Yeah, really positive. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the start of last year, and we were sitting here, it's a bit doom and gloom. This year, it's all positive. One loss in seven games in all competitions. It's a very, very good start. And actually, on air last week, we were a bit disappointed coming away from the Cambridge game with a point. We took the lead, and actually, the talk afterwards, you felt down. And like, actually, when you, when you got home, you think eight points, good start, sixth in the table. So, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, everybody should be quite positive at this point. It's not a bad sign if we're, we're disappointed about a home draw. I mean, you've always talked about the importance of home form and making it a fortress. Are you liking what you're seeing so far? Yeah, I think, I think we're at where we should be at the moment with the performances. You know, I think Accrington was in the end. I know we got done right at the end, but it was a fair result. And Derby here could have gone the other way, we know that. But on the whole, I think we're at where we're at. And on paper, we've had a difficult start, including today's game. Yeah. You know, I looked at yeah. the Plymouth and the Cambridge games. Both teams were hovering around the top six when we played them. And Wickham, after their result last week, this is a tough place to go to. So, yeah, we are where we're at at the moment. If we can get the three points today, we will be in the top six. Mm. And that's where we need to be. Yeah, I mean, home form pretty good. It's important we have that same mentality away, isn't it, Brandon? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think Wickham are quite a strong as when we played them last year. We got well turned over last year at Wickham and, uh, and the result was close and it actually was on the day. I commentated on the day and it was a late goal for must have made it 2-1. But he changed his entire front three with about 25 minutes to go. They were really comfortable. I don't think they were strong. I think they're suffering with a few injuries. They might have a couple back today. But I think it's a much better time for us to be playing them than when we did last year. When we were struggling ourselves, we couldn't quite find our feet at, at, at the point we played them last year. Yeah. We had some late signings. I don't think Nigel knew his best 11 at that point, And we went there and got exposed a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we've had, uh, what, three weeks of Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday now. From a managerial point of view at the start of the season, is that a good thing to get the lads fit? Or is it almost a bit of a nightmare to having to rotate <laughs> well, all the time? I've read Ben's comments saying it's, it's been a little bit tough. Mm. And we've picked up a couple of injuries. Um, most of them have got through it. Um, but listen, when you're picking up results, you know, you, as you know, you're picking up results, try, you ease off on the training, um, but the match is the most important thing. And if you're picking up, as you say, you're picking the points up, then I don't think you feel that tired. 
I don't think any of them will be complained. And also, on a couple of occasions, I think looking at some of the squad players, if who have started as squad players when the first couple of games, have made the squad stronger. Mm. You know, people have come in and done a job like Claydon at left back. You know, in, uh, I think we were looking at that position, thinking, oh, if we get an injury, but he's come in and done ever so well. So he's added to the squad. Payne's come in. I like the look of Payne. Um, so yeah, it's made the squad that little bit stronger, I think. We do have some injuries, but it gives players opportunities to step in and show they should be having a first-team place when everybody comes back to full fitness. OK, lots to, to crack on with before kick-off, so let's get straight to it, shall we? Let's hear from the gaffer, Ben Garner, who spoke to uh, Terry Smith yesterday. Pace Wickham, at the end of another three-game week, what's the uh, mood like around the place since Tuesday's win against Walsall? It's been good. Uh, pleasing to get through and uh, into the next round and now looking forward to the Wickham game on Saturday. Uh, it's been our third Saturday, Tuesday game week in a row. We still have one more to come next week. How much of an impact does that have on your preparation for games, especially when the midweek games are so regular? Obviously, it has an impact because you're minimising the training time. So it's a lot of play and recover and trying to get as much information as we can without uh, physically loading the players too much. And we put a lot of care into making sure that on these weeks, players are hitting similar numbers. So those that are playing games, the other lads are making it up with training and vice versa. So. Uh, it does have an impact, but we've been uh, creative with how we've worked and we're trying to get as much information in so we're as prepared as possible for each and every game. And looking at Wickham now, they, they had a fantastic season last season, they only missed out on winning promotion. What, what would you see as their strengths? Uh, they're a really good side. I think they've, they've grown over a number of years now under, under Gareth. They've got a really clear identity and obviously have had a, a spell in the championship, went very close again last season. Um, I think they're renowned for being very organised off their restarts and set pieces and very good at playing for territory. But they've also got some really talented players in their squad. They can play, they can move the ball. Very good on transitions um, through the pitch, got good pace and ability. Um, and you know you're going to be in for a battle going there. We're going to have to work and we're going to have to fight. Um, that's an absolute minimum going to Wickham tomorrow. And uh, I mean, they finished in the playoffs positions twice, both times they've been down here. Um, do you expect them to be up there again this time around? Yeah, I would do. I think they're, um, they're very good at what they do. They've got a clear structure, um, lots of quality within their, within their squad. You know, you look at their squad now and it's, it's laced with a lot of championship players. Um, and uh, like I said, Gareth has built a culture there over a period of time. And I think it's a good example to, to all clubs in this country that if a manager is given time and, and can build something, what can be done? Uh, hopefully there might be a, a few more that might follow suit because I think it's a good thing. So how do we ensure that we, uh, we impose our style of play onto, into the game? Bravery, for sure. Um, you know, we, we have to show a lot of courage tomorrow and a lot of bravery in, in, in how we play. We obviously have to compete. As I said, that is an absolute minimum going to Wickham and we have to stand up to what they do. But we don't want to become embroiled in that game. You know, if it becomes uh, uh, that type of game, Wickham are very good at that. So. We have to compete in certain moments of the game and, uh, and we have to fight and we have to work. There'll be periods of the game where I'm sure we'll come under pressure and we'll have to suffer as a group, but we also want to make them suffer. We'll make them under pressure by the way that we play. Yeah, home or away is down to how we play and uh, our mentality as well. This is the team that plays Wickham this afternoon. Same team from last week against Cambridge. Eight changes from uh, the cup game against uh, Walsall. And Kerbs, you know, you like that in terms of trying to keep it as mm. consistent as possible in the 4-3-3 yeah. formation? Yeah, well, you know, consistent team selection normally aligns with decent performances and results. So uh, that's what you set your store on. But you look, at, you look at the bench, as I said earlier, you know, um, Lavelle's come in when, and played ever so well. Do I see me with Nick to go in midweek? You know, and Miles is there, and, and as I, said, I like the look of Jack Payne. So it's made the squad stronger. Mm. They're all saying, we want in, uh, and if you don't do it, I don't think Ben would be too slow in putting them in. Brownie? Yeah, I think what it does when, you, when you've got stability and you don't have to make too many changes, you, you know as well as I do, getting partnerships with, with people on the pitch is very, very important, whether that's two centre-halves, whether it's a full-back and a wide player, whether it's the three midfield players. You start to understand the little things that they do and, and, and the runs that they make um, and so that's vitally important. And then what, what you've got is, if, and I, I've always said this, the most important people are the guys out of the squad because they're the ones you've got to try and keep happier. The ones play and take care of themselves. 
But if you can keep the Lavelles as Jaya see me as the Paynes happy, being sub and being patient and waiting for the opportunity, you're developing a 22-man, 23-man squad, and that's vitally important across the season to be able to compete. Curbs, do you feel we have for the finishers off the bench? Um, well, I'd like one more on there, to be honest. You know, we keep talking about it. Um, I think it's a lot, a lot to ask Miles, but you know, coming on a sub probably might be suiting him in, in, in the league games. Um, we've chucked out again, and apparently he's broke down again, hasn't he? Uh, I missed last week. Um, that's an area that we are got to be concerned about a little bit. Um, but while everyone's fit, I think uh, you know Ben's Ben's happy at the moment, but uh, that can quickly change, can't it? I think the important thing is every kid we've put in, every player that's come through our ranks has adapted and done very well. Clayton's come in, done yeah. very, very well. He's I mean, predominantly a winger who's slotted back in the left back, you know, doing a very good job. We've seen Miles come off the bench, Aaron Henry's come on, obviously scored in the cup. So, you know, there's nothing not to like, is there, when you get academy products come through and start to hold their own. That's the important bit. Yeah. It's not a flash in the pan. No, the only problem is the inconsistency of youngsters, isn't there? But we shall see how Absolutely. that goes. It's going to be fascinating up until the end of the window to see what happens. Anyway, that's the team. Let's have a look at the, uh, the league table now, shall we? And we can only look at the top half, of course, because that's <laughs> where we are. Just above that dotted line, and that's where we want to be come the end of the season. Ipswich and Peterborough occupy the top two spots, sit on 13 and 12 points respectively. They both have an impressive plus eight goal difference after just five matches as well. Portsmouth and Sheffield Wednesday, the only other clubs to currently sit on double figures in terms of points, they're third and fourth. We're only ahead of Bolton and Derby, though, on goal difference. And, Curbs, you, you touched on it earlier, but, you know, Sixth place after five games, a decent start. Perhaps even more impressive given that we've already played a side that were in the Championship last season and three that finished above yeah. us in League One. Yeah, a tough fixture list we've had. And, um, you know, we saw that at the start of the season. I knew that was coming, um, especially the two home games here with Plymouth and uh, Cambridge. And that's going to be a tough I think Ben's mentioned, you know, the way that uh, Wickham play, etc. So if we can get a result here today, that will cement our position in the top six and uh, look forward to the next home game. Yeah, Brownie, apart from Paul Stars from MK Dons Oxford, and you have to say Wickham as well, they were just below the, 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 the bottom of that top half of the table. Do you feel that the table is starting to take shape now, even though we are only five matches in? No, I still think it's too early, but there's plenty of encouragement to take from what we've done. The plus four goal difference, we've had seven different goal scorers, which we all thought was going to be a bit of a problem for yeah. us. We've all said could do with another striker, but we, they are pitching in, scoring from all over the pitch. So in that respect, that's a real positive. But no, I, I, I think five's too early for me personally. I, I have a look after I, I ten. I agree normally, but I actually do think it is starting. As I say, I've mentioned three teams that I'd expect to, to, to be there with their abouts, but you're probably looking at ten to twelve well, teams. You're much, much happier looking at it like that than exactly this, right. this year, this yeah. time last year, Absolutely. when we wasn't there. But Going back to what Brandy said about the goal scorers, the interesting thing for me is, is that some of the guys that have scored really needed to, yeah. like Kirk and Jai Simi. Mm. It's given them a real lift, hopefully, and we might now get to see the best of them. Fingers crossed. Full fixture list in League One. Let's have a look at the games that are coming up this afternoon in the third tier of English football. League leaders Ipswich welcome relegated Barnsley to Portman Road. Barnsley hadn't really got going yet this season, currently 16th. And last Saturday, they were beaten 3-0 at home by our opponents today, Wickham. The other two clubs who were relegated from the Championship, Derby and Peterborough, go head-to-head -head at Pride Park. And the two teams that will hope to be involved in the promotion mix this season, Plymouth and Bolton, face off at Home Park. We, of course, head to Bolton next weekend, so it will be interesting to see how that one goes. And chaps, standout games for you? Derby. 100%. I, I actually think our game's a standout yeah. game, if I'm honest. If you look down that list, I think our game's a pretty good one. Uh, but Curbs, you're right. Derby, Derby County versus Peterborough is big. And, and Peterborough, we were saying this last week when you were away, they have flown under the radar. Nobody gave them a mention, really. Mm. You know, we mentioned all the clubs that would do well this year, and for some reason we missed out Peterborough. Um, and they're flying at the moment. What are you trying to say? I, when I was away, well, you, you realised I missed out Peter. What are you trying to say? Oh, well, I didn't put it like that. I'm joking. I'm also, I'm also looking at teams that we think are going to be in the top six. Plymouth, Bolton. That's a big game. Yeah, absolutely. They're in and around the top six at the moment. Well, and we spoke a little bit earlier about the number of fixtures this, this month as well. Does that play into the hands of the, the, the teams that have the bigger squads? 
Yeah, um, I mean, you've got to be very lucky you know, to get, get through a season without taking uh, you know, quite a lot of injuries, especially how many games they're playing. Mm. Um, but go back to the fact that you don't seem to get that many injuries when you're doing well. So hopefully the boys that are out at the moment, and the one I'm concerned about is Chucks. Uh, Corey Black is out, as obviously I'm not seeing him on the bench there. But Chucks is the one you've got to be worried about because we haven't seen him at all this season. Yeah, Corey came on last weekend and, and went off again after about 25 minutes. But they're saying, what I've read this week, it's not particularly bad. It should be uh, uh, quite uh, quickly uh, re in, in terms of his recovery process. So hopefully, fingers crossed on that one. But Chucks is a concerning one. Yeah. You know, that's that's not ideal, is it, in any way, shape, or form when he's your, your backup? Well, I think I think Scott totally touched on it that when when you take an injury, so he's got a calf injury. You end up getting that right, and something else goes, doesn't it? You know so how it's it like is. the rest of your body's not quite yeah. match sharp yeah. again. I know, so I know you concentrate medical... on the injury, but not on the rest yeah, of the body. Yeah, I know the medical side is totally different to when I played and you played. But uh, yeah, that is the big worry that you get the calf, get that sorted out, and then something else. Like, what were you laughing for there when you said? Yeah, what were you laughing when, for? I mean, because it was so different. The buddy, the coach no, calf. Could, there was no, yeah, but it was. <laughs> he says it was. I oh, know it was different, but it was so different. Yeah, you yeah. can't fathom yeah. to begin. Yeah. To understand how, you know, good it, it, it is, yeah, how good it is now. It was yeah. so, we were so far behind, you know. Everybody was, I think. Yeah, yeah. no, everybody was. Yeah, everybody Absolutely. Was. Okay, let's take a, a quick break from today and get to club news updates now, shall we? And there's a few things to update supporters on. The tickets for Wednesday's Papa John's Trophy Group match against Gillingham are on sale. Priced at £15 for adults, though if you're a season ticket holder, you can get a £5 discount, making the cost of your ticket just a tenner. And remember, that game is on Wednesday, not Tuesday, and it kicks off at the earlier time of 7pm. Head to booking.cafc.co.uk to get your tickets for both matches now. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Supporters who reside outside of the UK and Ireland are reminded they can purchase their subscription for Charlton TV for just £220 per year or £35 per month recurring. And that subscription will allow you to watch every men's first team league game live, as well as a host of other matches from under 21s, under 18s and women's sides as well. The cost per match of the annual subscription breaks down to less than a fiver a game, which is based on you only watching the men's first team league matches. And last season, Charlton TV streamed exactly 99 games across the club's different teams. So you certainly get your money's worth. You may have seen the pop-up on screen already this afternoon, but I'd like to remind fans that they can contact us in the studio via WhatsApp this season. Curbs, Brownie and I have really enjoyed answering your questions so far this season. What are you laughing for, Brownie? Well, I don't win Curbs, you know, I don't get one. It's, it's brilliant. It's bloody I've brilliant. got one for you. I've got one. I've got one. Why would you? We, no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, fair point well yeah, no, made. That's fantastic. But we would, of course, love you to get in touch. The number that you need is on screen now, and if you send in a question for us today, then we could read it out on air. We look forward to hearing your views on Brownie's dress sense, uh, especially today. Uh, actually, not so much his dress sense, more just his lack of ironing. Oh, well, it's, listen, I come up with my rucksack on my back. The shirt gets put through the loop, goes on top of the rack in the train. I mean, I mean, no, we haven't got an ironing board here, have we? So what do you we, want me to we do? We haven't, no, there's no dressing room no, here. No, no coffee. It's a nice studio. No coffee machine. <laughs> He's off again. It's like defending, no isn't it? There you go. Oh, there yeah. he is. No food. Actually, give me a go. Yeah. Actually, it looks pretty decent there. Trust me, it looks a lot worse if you're sitting next to him. It's not even mine. This is the one the Bailey's gave me. Well, is no, it? he didn't actually give me. Uh, and I said, I'm definitely going to wear that on air. <laughs> so I just have to give it back to him. <laughs> so you've got to keep it now. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. OK, a couple of things. We talked about the WhatsApp. First up, not really a question to Curbs, but a thank you. All right. I came to my first game when I was 12 with my dad against Bolton in 2005. We lost 2-0, but I'll never forget the love I found for football and a team after that day. I've been hooked ever since, uh, despite the tr our troubles we've endured. And that's from Angelo Tristan. Mm. That's nice. Brownie, question for you. How does it feel now that it's come out that his red card, while faking yes. injury shouldn't have been given, said referee admitted in his recent autobiography. And I heard that you sort of said that you'd agreed with all these I years. I had all these years, all 20 at Mike Dean. Remember when all the catalogs came flying down, <laughs> right? So I'd, I'd said, yeah, well, what could he do? It was a deliberate amble, I meant to do it. And he, you know, and he sent me off and it was the right... He sent you off while he was on the stretcher. stretcher. But it was the right thing to do. And he's just come out in his book saying, no, nah, in hindsight, I shouldn't have sent the Leicester fella off and I shouldn't have sent the Charlton player off. No, like I thought he was it up. It was exactly what he did. He he was it, sorry? Mike Dean. 
Even oh, up, we that, went what's on that face four. Don't get me going on Mike Dean. Sorry. What's that face four? No, no, he, he evened it up. I think it was one of his first he definitely games. definitely evened it up. It was one yeah. of his first games. Peter yeah. Taylor was the manager of, of That's Leicester. That's right, got sacked after. And we went, yeah. he evened it up and we went and won it, I think. 2 0. Yeah, yeah. And some said, did Curbs find you? And I said, no, nah, because we won. It was never mentioned. <laughs> but if we'd have lost, I definitely would have got you. I definitely would have got you. You sort of fell over and went down in stages and stuck your hand up. That's exactly We must have it somewhere. To be fair, he's even done the little motion as well, hasn't he? Yeah. No, no, listen, I did. Ankle gave way, went down in stages and caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Please get more questions in. I've got one <laughs> at the moment. So I'll keep that up my sleeve for now. Um, but please, we have a bit of fun with it, don't we? OK, uh, let's talk about the Carabao Cup draw. Hard-fought Carabao Cup victory over Walsall Tuesday night. All the Premier League big boys in the draw. United, City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal. So who do we get? <laughs> With respect, Stephen is away. Not the glamour tie that some supporters may have wanted, but it does provide both clubs with a good opportunity to reach round four. The tie will be contested on the week commencing Monday, November the 7th. Just before the World Cup uh, starts in Qatar, I've got a feeling that won't be on the box live. <laughs> But we can follow that, of course, and you can too. Full fixture details, including ticketing information, will be released in due course. Now, Charlton's under-21s continue their perfect start to the season by thrashing Sheffield Wednesday 5-0 last Friday. Matt Dench, Jeremy Santos, Ewan Williams and a late double from Daniel Carno did the damage for the young addicts. What a free kick that was from Jeremy Santos, huh? Definitely the pick of the bunch, but here are Dan Carno's two goals. Four and two for him. 10 and 2 for the team, and we are delighted to say that under 21's head coach Danny Sender is joining us on co commentary with Terry Smith this afternoon. Our under 21's are back in action on Tuesday when they host Coventry City at Prince's Park, and that game kicks off at 2 pm. Charlton TV subscribers will be able to watch every kick live. Now, Charlton's under-18s got their season off to the perfect start on Saturday morning, thrashing Sheffield United at Sparrows Lane. Striker Patrick Casey bagged the hat-trick to send them top of the professional development League Two South after one round of fixtures. And the under-18s were in action this morning at Burnley 2. Kerbs, what were you pointing out there? No, it's just changed. I've been over there for a long, long while, the training ground. It looks like there's a lot going on. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, no. I'll pop down there. It's very impressive. Yeah, it's impressive. It's as impressive as the circles that, that Paul Geary's done on the pitch there. Very nice. <laughs> <That's> a town. <laughs> he must be due a testimony. No way. <laughs> yeah, 40 years. <laughs> Finally, we are delighted to be contacted by supporter Jack PC during the week. Who's that, chaps? That's Sasha. He's out in Montenegro at the moment and he recently went to see our former goalkeeper Sasa Illich at his hotel. He presented our 1998 Wembley hero with this season's goalkeeper's kit. Uh, thanks so much uh, for getting in contact, Jack. We'll have to get them both on Zoom later this season for a chat with us in the Charlton TV studio. Go on, when Kurtz. I went to Malaysia the other, the other week and I got out of the airport, I was waiting to see who was going to pick me up. And there was a guy... wasn't Sasser. No, 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 just look at that. <laughs> guy stand there with the All Sports shirt on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he comes from Gravesend. Oh, really? Yeah, and he, he works for... At, what do you call it? Astra Stadium TV. Astra. Stadium Astra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes from Gravesend. Lazy team. And he had his All Sports Charlton shirt Brilliant. on. I bet of all the top, top <laughs> people that have come out, that was his number one. He's, he's the one who's been telling them, get him out of here. Has he? Has he? I could be going out there later in the season, uh -huh. but we'll have to wait and see on that. OK, listen, great start to the season, have to say, for the Charlton's women team, who won last Saturday against Southampton at St Mary's. And I'm delighted to say now that Captain Emily Simpkins joins us. Emily, welcome to Charlton TV. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. How great was it to start the season with a win? I think it's always important to get off to a good start of the season. It was such a big build-up with pre-season. Um, and Southampton coming up as well, we didn't really know too much about them. Um, so it was important just to now kick on and get that momentum. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the goals now, shall we? And I have to say, somebody stepped up with a penalty <laughs> very, very confidently indeed. Can you see them? Yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah, I've watched it. This is about the 10th time i watched it, to be honest. <laughs> Only <now>. 10? <laughs> yeah. No, it seemed a long wait, to be honest because the referee was having to sort out players at the edge of the box, so it was a long wait. Uh, and a good finish here from, from Melissa. Mouse. Yeah, nice and calm spun her there and just slotted it away. How important was that start, do you feel? 
Yeah, like I said, it was, and we're such a new team now because we had so many players in through the door this pre-season. Um, it's just that nice to see all the work in pre-season is, is paid off and we've kind of clicked now. Uh, you're one of a number of players that, that joined the club in the summer. Do you feel you have settled in? Yeah, it's been quite a smooth transition for me, to be honest, because I came from Brighton. Um, and pre-season, like I said, was so busy. It's a good opportunity to have them chats with the new players. Um, and to be honest now, I feel like I'm settled and I've been here for like for years, really. Brilliant. I hope that's a good thing, not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, what, no, good. What, good. What's been the talk this season, you know, amongst you all? You know, what, what's the ambition for the campaign? Um, a big one for us, to be honest, is just to take care of our daily actions, our daily behaviours, um, one game at a time. Uh, making sure each week we're kind of improving on our performances and tidying up on little things. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it's not, we're not looking too far ahead, one game at a time. You've been so well schooled in media training, haven't you? I have to say, as a perfect answer. <laughs> Got some notes. Absolutely. <laughs> Let, let's talk about tomorrow, the first home game of the season against the London City Lionesses at the Oakwood. How, how much are you, are you guys looking forward to it? Yeah, it's been a good week's training, to be honest. Uh, there's a buzz around on the back of last weekend's win. Um, and with it being the first home game as well, all the girls are up for it. The club are hoping to get a big crowd there tomorrow as well. What would it mean to, to you and, and the teammates to, to be playing in front of a, a big audience? I know I can say on behalf of the girls, to be honest, we really pre appreciate the support whenever the fans get down and get behind us. It does actually give us a real boost. Um, so it'd be great if we could to get more fans down and supporting us tomorrow. How big was it that, you know, what happened with the Lionesses in the summer, winning the, the Euros as well for women's football? And, and, you know, how important is it that we sort of build on that and make sure people go to see the club games as well? Yeah, it's massive now just to go to your, whether it's your local club. I think the Lionesses for us, with it doing so well on, and it being televised, now we just need to keep that momentum and us as players to keep inspiring the next generation. And what can fans expect from the side tomorrow? Um, I'd say a team that is ultimately honoured to where the badge goes out, um, has each other's backs. We've got a good few, well, to be honest, we're all good technicians, um, tricky wingers. We like to create chances. So if I, if I haven't sold it there, then I don't know what... And someone who has the bottle to step up and take a penalty and put it in the top corner as well. That's it, that little bit of composure as well. Well, look, Emily, we're top of the table at the moment. Very early days, of course. We hope you stay top after uh, the game against the London City Lionesses. Thank you very much for coming on Charlton TV and all the very best tomorrow and the rest of the season as well. Thank you very much. Take care. Good luck. Uh, look, Curbs Brownie, I mean, you know, we really enjoy covering the, the, the women's football here on Charlton TV as well. I mean, how, how good would it be to get a, a really good crowd tomorrow? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think the Euros over the summer will have gone a long way to add into quite a few clubs, uh, you, you know, growth in, in, in the stands. But I think it's, it's a game that's progressing and should progress quite quickly, actually, over the next few years. I went down to the training ground, as we just spoke about, and went up the back, and there was a great spirit up there amongst them. I spoke with Karen, got a lovely pitch to train on, a little bit to the side. The AstroTurf is there if, if that pitch isn't, you know, in, in quite in the condition they want. Um, but I think in terms of where we were and where we're at, it's leaps and bounds, isn't it? Leaps and bounds. It's just got to continue. We've got to keep flooding, you know, in, in terms of the press and the coverage so that more and more people do mm. attend. I think it's very, very important. I've, over the last couple of seasons, I've had a vote. On the league, because I'm on the league managers committee, I have a vote for player of the month, manager of the month, and goal of the month. So I see, I've been seeing quite a lot of the football over the last couple of years. Uh, highlights get sent mm -hmm. to me, and etc. And, and you can catch it on BBC One. Now Sky have took it up. Yep. You know, Sky have took it up, and BBC is still doing it. So it's going to grow. It was, I was really pleased to see that, that they played at Southampton's ground. That's got to happen. You know. I've been advocating that for the under-21s or the under-23s to be playing at the yeah. stadiums. You know, Did you see that picture in that clip just earlier of our 23s? Yeah. I, I mean, that, yeah, yeah. that to I, me... It reminds me, when, when we first uh, came back to the Valley or when we was away from the Valley, we was playing the reserve games at Welling. When we first come back to the Valley, some of the players had never played at the Valley until they made their debut. Yeah. That can't be right. You know, so... so 
the women's team and the under 21s or under 23s have got to start playing Ground's at the stadium. Be, Ground's going to be yeah. pulling his hair out. Paul Geary will be going out here. There won't be nice circles. <laughs> yeah, so Brandy, Brandy mentioned the footage. Yeah, that the footage. didn't look good. It didn't it's look good. It's not like a proper game. Nah. It's, it's not like a proper there game. There was no one there and, and the pitch looked play. awful. Even for the officials and everything else. I've done a report with David Pleat for the, for the Premier League about the under 21s, under 23s, if you like, saying they've got to start playing at their stadiums because it, it's just it's just like a training game yeah, otherwise yeah. for the referees as well and the linesmen. So I know the pitchers can handle it and I know the cost is exorbitant because you've got to open up a stadium and there ain't going to be the crowd. But we've got to find some way that the women's team and the under-21s start playing on their grounds. Mm. So says Alan Kerbishley. OK, just before we move on, we'd like to remind everyone who has a season ticket for the men's side that they can attend all league matches at the Oakwood for free. I get down there tomorrow if you can, please. For non-season ticket holders, tickets remain on sale and can be purchased in advance by heading to booking.cafc.co.uk. Or, alternatively, you can pay at the turnstile. OK, right, on the men's side now, and George Dobson racked up his 50th appearance for the club on Tuesday night, and Charlton TV spoke to him yesterday to talk through his half-century. Dobbo, 50 Charlton appearances as of Tuesday. How does that feel to get to that milestone? Yeah, I was delighted. Um, obviously, like so quickly as well, um, only being there just over a season, so, so to get to that mark so quickly, I was delighted, um, and hopefully I can get many more in the future, because, yeah, I'm loving it here. And when you did come to us last summer, I mean, initially you weren't in straight away, where you had to wait sort of until October time before you really got in, but is that a target that you have for moving to a new club to really instantly cement a place in the team? Yeah, definitely. Like, it's no secret for me that um, where the club is, like, I'm obviously from down this way. It was such a big club that when I had the opportunity to come here, it, it was one that I really wanted to try and grasp and take with both hands. So that's what I'm just trying to do every day in training and in my performances to try and prove that I should be playing. Um, so then I can continue to make as many appearances for Cholton and continue to hopefully as grow grow and um, go through the leagues with them. And funnily enough, your 50 came against one of your old clubs, Walsall. I mean, what was it like going back there? Because I think it was your first time back, wasn't it? Yeah, it was where I found like my my way in the game, really. Um, so no, it brought, brought back a lot of good memories. and. Yeah, it was a nice moment to, to, to get on the pitch and, and obviously win the game. So, it was, yeah, no, it was a great night. I enjoyed it. And if you maybe look back to the first time you pulled on a Walsall shirt to the player you are now, how much do you think you've, you've changed as a player in that time? Uh, I, think, I think the way that I've tried to play is, is similar. I just think the big thing is consistency. Um, I feel like I know what I'm good at. Um, and, I, and I, I'm improving on what I probably feel like I'm not quite as good at. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I think the consistency is the biggest thing from, from when I started to where I'm at now. I'm sure all the Charlton fans watching this will agree when you talk about your consistency. You've been, you've been excellent really, haven't you, since, since you've come in. I mean, how would you rate the start to this season, six in the table at the moment, aren't we? Yeah, I think we've started really well. I actually, uh, I think we should have more points, really. Um, you look at our, probably our best performance of the season was, was the game we lost against Sheffield Wednesday. We've had some really good performances. We've obviously got a lot still to work on. Um, but no, I think we're in a good place and yeah, I'm really looking forward for the season to continue and for us to grow and hopefully we can make it a really successful one. And you've started all the league games so far, barring the, the derby game where you came on in the first half. And I think Alan Kerbishley said when you came on in that game in the first half, you, it looked like you came on with a bit of a point to prove. Did you did you feel that way? Yeah, of course. Like like any player, I, I was I was disappointed to be to, to be dropped from the team in that game. But obviously, the, the gaffer has to pick a team that he thinks right, and then it's up it's up to you to try and to try and prove him wrong. Um, and, that, and that's what I try and do every time I step on the pitch. I felt like I did that that day, um, and that's what I'm 
trying to do every time I'm selected because I was saying I want to play a lot of games for this club and I want to be in the team. So, um, yeah, I'd, uh, it, it was it, it was something like a point to prove, but um, yeah, it's just one of them things. It happens and you've just got it's how you react. What, do, what does that competition for places do for someone like you? If you're obviously in a position where you're someone says to you, you're guaranteed to start, you're guaranteed to play every week, you can maybe become a little bit complacent, whereas if you've got other players pushing you, you know you've got to perform week in, week out to keep your shirt. Um, and then that's what I feel like I've done since, since I've been given the shirt back, and that's what I've got to continue to do every time I'm given the opportunity to, to play. And I, I think from the way I play, um, you can see that I'm obviously wholehearted and and give give 100% every game, and I'm improving all the time. On Wickham to come on Saturday. What were you expecting from them? They of course reached the playoff final last year, didn't they? Yeah, it'll be a tough game. Um, you obviously know what you're going to get from Wickham. It's going to be direct. It's going to be long balls into the box. So you're going to have to defend, but then you've got to have the bravery to to play our game. If we get sucked into their game completely, then they'll probably come out on top. I mean, it's, it's about us being brave, getting on the ball um, and playing the way that we want to play and putting our stamp on the game and hopefully coming away with a, with a, with a win because that's, that's what we'll be going there trying to do. Yeah, and you know he's become an integral part of the side. And Curbs, another thing you said a couple of weeks ago that you see him as a proper player. <laughs> How impressed have you been with him? Yeah, because I just said to Bradley there that, that him and Claire, I think, under Nigel were just out of it, out of the picture. Uh, probably not being considered, and they've had to fight to get back in, both of them. And now they're both stayed in. It's funny, I did see him on the... We, we went, after the filming here, we went over, didn't we? I don't know if he was with me. Was he with me? Or, no, no, I don't think so. Right. But we've gone over, and as we've gone into the director's lounge, George come along with his man of the match with Keith, Keith Peacock. And so we bumped into him, and I went, Angry and hungry, and <laughs> angry and hungry. I said, I like people like you, and he just put his head down and walked off. I said, I'd like to have been there yesterday when you got dropped, like yeah, you know, because yeah, you yeah. can imagine it. Yeah. Ben's made That's a what it's kind of reaction you want, though, isn't yeah, it? Ben's made a decision, pulled him in, yeah. or he might have done the finger or whatever. Curly finger, Merv. pulled him, got yeah. the Merv. <laughs> <laughs> pulled him in, and said, like you know, I'm, I'm changing it, blah blah blah, and he would have thought, well, no, that ain't right. I, I've been doing okay, but as he said, he accepted the manager's decision. Then got his opportunity, didn't he? About 20 minutes into yeah. the game, was it? And uh, suddenly he's back, and now he's got to stay there. He's not so angry, but he's still hungry. It <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. looks but, like he could have a good dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, type of midfielder you'd have liked to play to, alongside, behind? Yeah, I, look, he does his job and he does it effectively, and he doesn't pretend he's anything the else. Great right attitude. Yeah, yeah, great attitude, and does what he does really well, and doesn't try to do any more than that. Right. I played golf with him the foot when he got signed, and I said, "Oh, you know what? You, as you do as you walk around the course, what kind of player are you?" And he just sold it as it was. I'll sit, I'll break up play, I can pass the ball. You, you know, it. yeah, yeah. Mm. But he, he, he said, "I won't score many goals." He reminds you know, me of Keithy Jones. You're very mm. much like Keithy Jones. Keithy yeah. Jones. If you yeah. said to him, he does what it says in the tin. Yeah, yeah. Go and man, man yeah. to man, He'd do Mark Gazza, like we did. And he followed him over to the dugouts, didn't he, Keith? <laughs> I think he did it with Gerard, didn't he? I know, yeah. I know the one with Gerard. He just he followed him wherever. He went. And I think that was the same. If yeah. you said to him, "Stop, Scott Miller," it'll be on you all day. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant one about Gazza, wasn't it? He went out to change his boots and he, and, and he followed yeah. him over while he was changing his boots, his boots on the touchline. Yeah. Absolutely, that, that is man-to-man -man marking. OK, look, it has been a, a busy week for the Addicts, hasn't it? Two games, uh, one in the Cup, one in the League. Let's have a look back at them, shall we? And the Cambridge game, Browdy, you, you were here, Curbs yep. and I weren't, but, but we know enough about it and saw enough about it with the highlights. Yep. Slightly disappointing, and you, and you mentioned it, but a bit of a come down after the euphoria of the Plymouth game. It, They've done the homework and we've got to expect this, haven't we, where they're just sitting back all the time, teams? Yeah, absolutely. The first half wasn't a lot in it. I thought we shaded it, you know, and that's, that's a shot that you should have done better with, actually. But I thought we shaded the first half um, uh, and we, we took the lead. I mean, that, that, again, that's Dobbo with a lovely little ball out. Now, this diagonal was on quite a lot in the first half and it faded out second half, but we got a lot of 1v1s or 2v1s on the far side. 
I still question that's offside, but no one's backed me up on it, so I must be wrong. <laughs> well, I, I wonder whether he was behind the ball, but there's you no know, VAR, is there, in the EFL? Uh, well, so. nobody even questioned it. But, it, you know, they went in 1-0 down, and I actually thought they were going to come out and press higher up and be more energetic. They weren't. They did exactly the same, but they, they did steal the ball off us much better. We've got a lot of issues with that goal, or this goal, sorry. You know, it's uh, in terms of us defensively, we, we were, I don't know why Innes was so high up the pitch. I don't know why O'Connell didn't stay with his man, but they scored, they deserved it, and actually 1-1 was probably a fair result on the day. Mm. Kurt, as a manager, when you're up against a side that are happy to drop deep and soak up the pressure, important to tell your players to be patient, whatever the crowd are wanting? Yeah, but also be aware of that counter. They're doing it for a reason. It's the counter-attack, and, you know, so you've got to have people like Dobson, and perhaps one or two others are aware that if the fullbacks have gone or someone else has got into the box, then you're ready for that counter attack and we need bodies back defending. So I think it's what Man United did, didn't they, the other night against Liverpool? Yeah. Got behind a ball and counter attacked mm. and you know Difficult chance that for Miles on the angle, but we had a better chance than that with Stockley and they don't they haven't shown it. Okay, looking at Walsall now, Ben made eight changes to the starting eleven, still managed to record the win. How pleased can we be with that? I think he's got to be pleased that we're through um, uh, you know, be because he did make a lot of changes and it was a young team. Um, players who are out the side, I've, I've been there. It's not easy coming in for a cup game, That's knowing not. that you're not going to play at the weekend. No. It's, it's difficult mentally. The boys have gone in and done a good job, but I don't see how this isn't a goal. I thought the movement of the centre forward has lost O'Connor. He gets across him and it looks even there to me. He's ducked in with his chest yeah, and it's hit his chest it. and it's gone in the back of the net. So we really have got away with one there. I don't think he would have gone in with that pace even of his arm. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's just the motion, I think, yeah. of his body that, like that, that the referee's gone. He's got to put that in with his arm. I don't think he has. But, but Kurt, look, Tuesday was only the second time in 14 years we've reached the round three of, mm. of the League Cup. Yeah. So what, what are the positives? I, I've got to say, That's Miles. That's a great yeah. That there is That's a massive positive. Absolutely. Miles, brilliant. And DJ, brilliant as well. I'll tell you what the positives is. It's, as we said earlier, we've got a lot of injuries at the moment, but it's made our squad that little bit stronger. Mm. So when the injuries come back, listen, I would imagine these boys will be playing against Stevenage. Which is a tough old game. You've got Steve Evans there, so you know what to expect. It won't be easy. You know, it's not going to be nice. But I suppose, you know what? When you're in the League One, you're looking for that big team to, to get a good crowd and, you know, don't mind if you get, well, if you get walloped. Well, no, not really. I'd rather play Stevenage, get through to the next round. Um, you know, because there are some big clubs. They're all playing each other, the big clubs. Uh, there will be an opportunity to get them in the next round. Mm. But Stevenage away gives us an opportunity. And Brownie said there, uh, you know, it is difficult for the team. You know you're going to be left out when you go and play Stevenage. You may be left out for the league game. But go there and win it. Uh, you know, give everyone a boost. Still have the right attitude, aren't they? That's all yeah. you can do. Especially when you're knocking on the door saying, I'm not playing at the moment, and why not? OK, the lads are, are coming out, looking forward to this game. Let's mm. remind ourselves of the teams, shall we? Um, we're unchanged from that Cambridge game. Wickham. Brownie. Yeah, I've been having a couple of changes. You know about David Wheeler as well, didn't you? Yeah, I tried to sign Wheeler when I was at Ebbsfleet and he went to Exeter. And fair play to him for less money, a lot less money. He just wanted to play league football. But they've struggled with a lot of injuries to forward players. Uh, McCleary, who done a right good job on us last year, I think yeah. he scored a couple. Very good player. Yeah, and assisted here. You know, he's one we've got to take care of. Um, but I think they're struggling for forward options. But Scowan's been playing well for him. I think he sits in midfield, we'll see today. But I think he sits in midfield. He's done a good job for him. But they were, they were three straight losses. And they went up to Barnsley last week, needed a result, and absolutely tore them to pieces and won 3 0. And I think, I think McCleary was up front last week. That's how short they are. He normally plays off the striker, doesn't he? Advancing behind. But it's at home, you know, uh, they're, they're generally very, very strong. You expect them to be strong again today. So what are you thinking, Kerbs? Mentality today, difficult place to go, despite them not being as yeah. strong as last season. Uh, uh, once again, I've been pressed by the pitch. I just got a glimpse of that, you know, not knowing too much about Wickham. But look, so there'd be no questions uh, about the pitch and we can't play out from the back, which I know Ben's going to want to do, and mm. that's the way it is. So, yeah, no problems with that on that side of it. You know that Wickham, uh, uh, apart from the, the last couple of weeks, they are dangerous at home, they are difficult. This is a tester for us, mm. I think. 
And as I say, if we get anything today, we stay in the top six, which is the aim. Well, so if we win, we still should, even though yeah. we're, we're just I a little goal difference. Anyway. I, you you know, I, yeah, the other two have got difficult games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think they're under a little bit of pressure with them as well. You know, they've lost three, one, two, six points. They're at home. They lose another one at home. They just lost to Shrewsbury, I think, at home. It was the last game they lost. They lose another home game. Mm. I know it's very early days, but, you know, they're, they're expected to be up there and, uh, mm. you know, in, in the playoff zone. And it's not far for our fans to travel, so I should imagine there's quite a lot there. Yeah, I think we were 13, 1400. Yeah, we good. sold good. good. In terms of Jaden, important he gets a, a goal from open play, really, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I'd have to say so, yeah. I mean, the penalty stuck away was a lovely finish, yeah. but for his own confidence. And an, an important time as well. Yeah, but for his own confidence, he'll want to get one or two in open play and get up and running. But I don't think he's a lad that's going to be phased by either Scott. No, I think no. he's quite mentally strong, Jaden. I'm, I'm, I'm looking Very. at Kirk today. I'm looking at Kirk, you know. He's been here now season and he got that lift of the goal a couple of weeks ago and uh, he's playing well. You need him to go on. We need him to be we need him to be different in this league for us. Interestingly, last week we were kind of a bit down on Raksaki because he he was brilliant. Yeah. He was brilliant. He was nine out of ten. Yeah, right, but then he, he, he like he had no energy. Like he had zero energy mm. last week. He couldn't get back. He wasn't his, you know, exciting self that you know that I, I, I thought I was going to see. So it'd be interesting to see how he responds today. Because I think you know when you're a youngster and you get inside, that first one's all all, all yeah. energy, isn't it? And the let's, second one hits you, boom. Do you know what you two could just carry on and <laughs> on and on? But let's get to our commentary team, shall we? A very warm welcome to our under 21s head coach Danny Sender. But first, Terry Smith, tell. Yes, delighted to say that alongside me I have under 21 head coach Danny Sender. And Danny, delighted to have you here. Um, looking forward to this this afternoon? Really looking forward to being here. Thanks for having me. And it's the Alex who get us underway. All four of those cup. To, sorry, it's uh, Wicket who get us underway. Uh, ball sent forward immediately down the Charlton left, defended away. And the Alex will have the first throw in of the afternoon just in front. 